What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have another product review for you. This is going to be from Fine Fine again. They have sent me out a different product of theirs and that is their D6, which is a version of a stream deck. So what I'm going to be doing here is unboxing it. I'm going to show you how to set it up, integrate it with OBS, let you guys know how I feel about the product and whether or not I recommend it. So definitely stay throughout the whole video. But if you want to jump around through different chapters, there's going to be chapter breakdowns throughout the video as well. So you can jump to the section that you're most interested in. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Before I get into actually opening this up though, I do want to show you guys the packaging just so that way you can get some information on it and everything like that. Nothing too crazy just to kind of show you guys what you would see on the packaging with the information that they share. So when you open this up, which it's packed pretty tightly, you're gonna get your instructions, which I definitely recommend you guys taking a look at the guide here. I'm gonna go over how to set it up and everything as well, but it's still good to read that. And then you're also gonna have your power cable here. This is going to be a regular USB to uh, USB type C. So you can also take this adapter piece off and this right here will turn into a USB type C as well, depending on how your computer is set up. And then the other end is also a USB type C. So we got that. And then the last thing is the actual device itself. So you got your buttons and everything, your protective film over this so that you don't have any scratches. And then on the bottom border is gonna be a RGB light that will change different colors and everything. On the back side, you're gonna have kind of like this rubber grip here and right down here as well. And then you're gonna have your power input and then this is for you to toggle on and off the RGB strip. And that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get this set up. So before we can get started with using the device, we need to install the software first. So I'm going to put the link to the software downloader in the video description below. Once you get to the screen here, scroll on down to the very bottom. And if you're using Windows, click on the download now for Windows. And if you're using Mac, then click on the download now for Mac. Once you install the software, it's going to look just like this. So let's do a quick run through of the program. So on the top left, you have your app store, you have your help forums, tutorials, and settings. Underneath that, you have your default scenes, which is going to be all the tiles that would be part of that scene. If you wanted to create a new scene, you can hit the plus and it will give you a whole new set of blank tiles. If you wanted to delete that, just make sure it's selected by having that hollow dot right there. And then we'll hit minus and it'll tell you which scene that you have selected and we can hit yes to delete it. If you want to get into any more additional information about your scenes or create your scenes or rename them or anything like that, that's going to be right here inside the settings. To get to that, you're going to click on this icon right here. Down underneath is going to just be talking about the device that is connected. And then inside of the center is all your tiles. And then you have different pages so you can create new pages. You can delete pages by right clicking and going to page delete. And then over on the right hand side is going to be search. That way you can search through all the stuff on the right hand side here. You also have all of your different types of plugins. These are your default plugins that come with it. And you'll be using those to fill in the different tiles here, which I'll show you in this video. If you're wanting to ever remove something that you have installed or you just don't need to see any of these things anymore, you can click on the three lines right here and we can just uncheck anything that we don't wanna see and then hit okay and then we just have that one. So inside of the app store, you'll have discover, which is gonna be different types of products that Find Find sells. Then you have plugins. Now this is what you're gonna be wanting to add into your software itself to make things more productive for you. Like if I was to install this voice mod, I can hit install, hit okay. It will then tell me that it's able to be unloaded if I wanted to delete it. And now if I was to go over here, and add it in now we got it right there and then inside of the store we also have icons so if you're wanting to change any of the icons that are on your tiles they give you six different types of packages that you can install and you can change those icons however you want 
And then tutorials, they have some tutorials that you can watch and learn different parts of the device if you ever have any questions. And that is pretty much the software in a nutshell. And then we'll start adding stuff later on in the video as well. So in order for us to get OBS Studio to communicate with this device, we have to be able to add in the WebSocket credentials to OBS into the device. So to find the WebSocket in OBS Studio, we're going to open up OBS Studio, go to Tools, go down to WebSocket Server Settings, and then we're going to go to Server Settings and look for Show Connect Info. From there, you'll see Server IP, Server Port, and the Server Password. For me, I have it blocked in this video just because I don't want to share that information. Now, next, you're going to want to open up the Find Finds program, and we're going to go and open up OBS Studio and bring in Scene. Now, this will then automatically open up the OBS Studio plugin, and you should have the server IP and the server port automatically populated. If it's not, then all you have to do is just go over to your OBS Studio and grab the information and bring it over. Now, the server password is going to be blank, so you'll have to also bring that information over as well. Now, once you have that connected, you'll see at the very bottom here where it says connected to OBS Studio, and then all of your scenes and sources will now be visible inside of OBS Studio. So here's all of my different scenes and then I'll be able to also have all my different sources depending on which one I'm grabbing. So like if I grab this one, now I have all of my different scenes and sources and everything like that. So let's go ahead and start building out our scenes and everything for our tiles to be able to use the device. Now I've already done this just to kind of demonstrate what it could look like. And I have my scenes at the top. I have my go live for Twitch. I have a microphone that I can toggle on and off. And then I have different ways of clipping. So horizontal clipping, vertical clipping, and then being able to clip at the same time by using a action or multi-action, or in this case, it's considered an action flow. So I'm going to show you how to make something like this. So what we're going to do is create a brand new scene. It's completely blank. And what we want to do first is create a folder. So we're going to create a folder and drag it over. Now, I don't like this folder icon, so we're going to go ahead and change it. By clicking on the gear icon, we're going to go to select local file. And then from in here, we can choose any icons that we have or any icons you have on your computer and we just hit open do original image and it will fill it directly in so now that we have our folder we can click in and it gives us 14 tiles to work with so let's go ahead and start off with the scenes now i'm only going to do two scenes so that way we don't have so many scenes to cycle through but we're just going to do just the first two so i'm going to change the icon again for the scene so we'll go to select local file and we're going to look for the number one there we go original image and we'll repeat the process for the second one all right so from in here we have our two scenes so we're going to go ahead and assign them so down here at the bottom for scenes we're going to select starting soon and then we're going to select just chatting so now we got our two scenes we got our stream button so this will send us right to twitch or wherever we have our obs assigning our streams to and then the next thing we want to add in is some hotkeys. So for hotkeys, it's going to be in toolbox. We're going to go to hotkey and I'm only going to assign one. And what we're going to do is just click on that and then click the key on our keyboard for that hotkey. Now, once we have all that set up, we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up OBS and show you how everything works. So let's look at the functionality of the device. So I have OBS pulled up, I have the device over here, and then I also have the software over here as well. So this is the scene that I had built previously. And if I was to transition away from my Be Right Back to my Starting Soon, I'm gonna press that on the actual device. And you can see that now I transitioned over to my Starting Soon. If I wanted to mute my microphone, I'm going to click on that button and if you look down here into OBS right now it is being picked up and it is transmitting it into the stream but if I was to hit that button now it is muted and you can see that it is all grayed out and it's not being transmitted into the stream for the go live here if I click on that button right here it's going to then transmit the stream to Twitch and then if I was to hit any of these clip ones these ones right here 
then it is going to either clip horizontally, vertically, or both at the same time. And that is pretty much the functionality, the basic functionality of using this type of device for your stream. All right, so now that I've gone through everything with the product, I wanna go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts about the product. Big question, do I recommend it? Yes and no. Yes, if you are a budget streamer and you don't wanna spend $150 on the Elgato version of this type of device. However, if you are a seasoned content creator or streamer and you're looking for something that's going to grow with you as you continue to create content i do not recommend this device i know the price is very tempting to just go and spend it because it's cheaper than the elgato but the software does not offer everything that you might need the plugins are a huge issue there's not enough plugins compared to the elgato's plugins library it's very very low and i feel like they really do need to reach out to other developers or even develop stuff in house to really make that plugin library stand out that is going to be the biggest thing for this device the other thing that i would really like for the fine finds device to have is profiles the other thing that i'm not too fond of with the fine finds one is the actual buttons pushing on these tiles is sometimes difficult and it feels like i have to put a lot of force into those buttons to get them to understand that i'm trying to press it the other thing is being able to import different types of tile packages that you may have now that is kind of nitpicky i mean you can just manually upload individual photos and stuff like that if you want to but to have the entire library of the thing that you purchased or downloaded for free imported directly into the device makes it so much easier to find all the icons in one place versus trying to find the folder that you saved them in. The other big issue with the Fine Finds version is it only works with OBS Studio. You can't use it for Streamlabs, you can't use it for XSplit or any other type of encoder that's out there. There may be plugins to where you can stream to like a certain location like YouTube or Twitch or something, but being able to utilize your scenes and your sources in your encoding program it only works for obs and then there's issues that i've ran into like where it's freezing and i've had to have it like closed down in task manager or it's crashed on me and it's crashed on me way more or froze on me way more than my stream deck did the other thing i'm not a fan of is that it's not plug and play you have to go and find your web socket in OBS and add it in there. It should just be plug and play. We want to make this as user friendly as possible. And that is very non user friendly for people who are not super tech savvy. A lot of people just like plug and play stuff. So that is something that I would like for them to add to where all you got to do is just plug it in and it's good to go. Like once you open up OBS, it should be able to automatically find all your scenes and stuff like that with no problem. But those are just some of the things that I personally feel that you can improve on. But again, it really just matters on the creator. If you're someone brand new, you're on a super tight budget, this is definitely something to use because it does do the bare basics that you would basically need as a creator. But if you're looking for something that is gonna grow with you, then I would look elsewhere and go with maybe something with an Elgato Stream Deck and they have different versions. They have a free one that gives you six free tiles. They have a mini one that gives you the six physical tiles and it starts at like 60 bucks. Then you got the big one, which is very similar to the amount of tiles that this one has for 150. And then they got some other ones after that. So the software itself definitely has room to grow. The plugins is a huge area that it does need to grow in. And I'm looking forward to seeing what else they add to it. But that is my personal opinions on it. I would love to hear yours. We can talk about it in the comment section below. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know. And if you also need additional videos on this device, I can definitely do that for you as well. I've got no problems with that. So let me know if you're interested in that in the comment section below. But guys, that is pretty much everything that I have for today's video. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video, share it out, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care.